Hey guys, as Peter said, my name is Aaron Horowitz. Um, let's see how this works. And tonight, <laughs> hello, <laughs> I'd like to talk to you about a philosophy that I hold true in my life. And to do so, I'll start at the beginning. Literally, the beginning. We started out as a species of makers. If you needed a spear, you got two rocks, you chipped them together, you made it an arrowhead, and you lashed it to a stick. If you needed a loincloth, fitting for the time, you went, you took that spear, you found yourself a woolly mammoth, you killed it, you skinned it, and you tanned it. And as our needs became more advanced, so did our manufacturing techniques, and craftsmen began to emerge. Let's flash forward to the year 1750 around. The Industrial Revolution hits, and we begin to mass manufacture our products in factories. And slowly but surely, those craftsmen faded into the woodwork, and with them, our culture has really shifted from makers to consumers, somehow pre-programmed to think that we can no longer make those goods that we need. But now, we stand at the cusp of a really interesting time in history. Things that were otherwise unavailable for us to make only a matter of years ago, everybody in this audience can do in their very own homes. We can 3D print plastic components from our desktop computers and build just about anything we'd like with open source hardware. There's just one thing that troubles me about all this. It's a question I've heard over a dozen times this past year. Somebody will come to me with a brilliant idea, followed by the question, where can I find someone to build this? And now every time I hear this, I find myself saying the same thing. Why don't you build it? Now, I'm always met by apprehension, but this is my philosophy. Just start building. Here's why. When you have a purpose to what you're learning, you can gain whatever skills you need to achieve that goal. When you have something tangible to latch onto, you can start to learn out of love. After all, we're a species of makers. And the reason I stand here and say this with so much confidence is that a year and a half ago, I was asking myself that same question. Where can I find somebody to build this? As part of Design for America at Northwestern University, I found out about a project called Jerry the Bear. Dreamt up by Hannah Chung, Mert Asuri, and Yuri Molina, Jerry was a robotic teddy bear to help teach kids with type 1 diabetes how to take care of themselves. Now, I personally was immediately drawn to this idea because when I was a child, I was diagnosed with human growth hormone deficiency, which is basically when your body doesn't produce the stuff that you need to grow. So through a period in my childhood, I had to have injections every day, but that really pales in comparison to a the medical procedures that kids with type 1 diabetes have to go through for a lifetime. So I hopped on board with both feet to take this idea on a post-it into the hands of those kids. But there's just one little part of the story that I'm leaving out. None of us knew anything about how to build this. I didn't know what a resistor was, a transistor, a phototransistor, a capacitor, an integrated circuit, robotics, mechatronics. I didn't even know what the word mechatronics meant, let alone how to transform pieces of silicone and ceramic and bring them to life. But what I did know is I believed in this idea. I loved this idea. I knew that it had to be made, and who else was going to make it but us? So for the next 10 weeks, we took a crash course with an emphasis on the word crash. I can't tell you how many times my programs would not run because I was missing a semicolon. How many circuits I wired that outright didn't work because I soldered a wire to the wrong pin, and how many of those ended up catching fire and smoking in my face. <laughs> but at the end of those 10 weeks, we had this. And here's a picture of our first prototype. And what you can't tell, because there's a very cute girl hugging it, is that that bear's head is right about to fall off of its body. <laughs> Just about the only thing that's holding it on are about three two-inch metal nails attaching the fur around its neck to its hard modeling foam chest. But those are just minor details. <laughs> we had built something that we knew nothing about 10 weeks before. Now let me tell you, that is one of the most empowering feelings that exists. And what I started to realize is that the same information taught within a classroom can take on a whole new meaning when applied to something real. A line of code as cryptic as T-I-M-S-K greater than greater than one can be transformed from a way to control the digital port registers of a microcontroller into the way to make a circuit laugh. Now, what I had discovered 
was a new type of education, one based on purpose-driven projects. And I was hooked. I didn't want to stand for just taking one or two classes on the side that gave me this same sense of fulfillment. So at the end of that year, I did just about what one student every year does in the McCormick School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. I changed my major, and I made up one with probably the longest title you've never heard before. <laughs> it's called Mechatronics and User Interaction Design, but it's really just a fancy way of saying how people play with robots. And I kind of like to joke around that I majored in Jerry the Bear in school, but at the end of the day, it's kind of true. And so when the time came to move from Chicago to Providence and start working on Jerry the Bear, which now looks like this, full time as a business, it took me about 30 seconds to convince my teammate Hannah Chung to move along with me. And now every day is a Jerry day. But interestingly enough, the hardest part of this whole process, it wasn't the robotics. It wasn't the move to Providence. It wasn't the countless hours of failure. Don't get me wrong. Those were difficult. But the hardest part of this whole process was taking that first step, believing enough in myself that I had the power to learn these skills. Now, taking that step is what transforms a skyscraper of information into a staircase. Now, trust me, there's no elevator to the top. But once you take that first step, the second is easier, and the third becomes faster. And invariably, you will stumble and trip along the way. But who wouldn't when you're climbing the steps to the top of a skyscraper? So the next time someone asks you, or the next time you ask yourself, where can I find someone to build this? Remember these three words. Just start building. <laughs> Thank you.